What happens when you stack I on top of itself forever? And what if you do the same with minus I? At first, both towers seem chaotic. But as we iterate, patterns begin to emerge. And remarkably, do they converge to the same place or to two points that mirror each other? Let's explore why. Let's begin with an infinite power tower, I raised to the power of I raised to the power of I, and so on, forever. If this tower converges, it must converge to some value. Let's call that value x. Now notice something important. The entire tower has value x, but the exponent on the very first i is also the same infinite tower. That means the exponent is also x. So the infinite structure collapses into a single equation. x equals i to the power x. Now we apply the natural logarithm. This transforms the equation into a simpler form. The natural log of x equals x times the natural log of i. We now repeat the same step for the base minus i. At this point, the infinite tower problem has been reduced to two logarithmic equations. And now we are ready for Euler's formula. In the previous step, we reduced the infinite power tower to a single equation. The natural log of x equals x times the natural log of i. And the same structure appears when the base is minus i. So everything now depends on one question. What is the natural logarithm of i? To answer that, we leave algebra behind and move to geometry. On the complex plane, the number i lies one unit above the origin. That corresponds to a rotation by pi over 2. Using Euler's formula, i can be written as e to the power i times pi over 2. Taking the natural log, we find that the natural log of i is i times pi over 2. Repeating the same idea for minus i, the angle flips sign. So the natural log of minus i is minus i times pi over 2. Substituting these results, we arrive at two master equations. And from here, the solutions will finally emerge. We now arrive at the analytical solution. From earlier, we found that the infinite power tower must satisfy a fixed point equation, x equals i to the power x. To solve this equation, we first rewrite it using exponentials x equals e to the power x times the natural log of i. Now we rearrange the terms. Multiply both sides by e to the power minus x times the natural log of i. This produces a very special structure, a quantity multiplied by its own exponential. This type of equation is called a Lambert equation. Special note, equations of the form u times e to the power u equals a constant cannot be solved using elementary algebra. Instead, they are solved by a special inverse function called the Lambert W function. Applying Lambert W allows us to isolate the variable explicitly. The solution can now be written as a ratio involving Lambert W and the natural log of I. We now repeat the exact same process for the base minus I. This produces a second expression with the same structure, but a different angle inside the logarithm. When we evaluate both expressions numerically, we obtain two complex numbers. Notice something remarkable. They share the same real part, but their imaginary parts have equal magnitude and opposite signs. This is not a coincidence. Changing the sign of the logarithm's angle reflects the solution across the real axis. The two limits are therefore complex conjugates. And this is the complete analytical explanation of where the infinite power towers converge. We define the function f of z equals i to the power z. A fixed point is a value z star that satisfies z star equals f of z star. To test convergence, we look at the derivative. f prime of z equals the natural logarithm of i times i to the z. The key rule is simple. The iteration converges if the magnitude of f prime evaluated at z star is less than 1. Now let's apply this test to both towers. For tower A, based on i to the i to the i, the fixed point is approximately 0 0.4383 plus 0 0.3606i. 
The magnitude of log IEA times Z star is about 0.892, which is less than 1. For tower B, using negative I, the fixed point is the complex conjugate, and the same convergence test gives the same value. So both towers are attracting. They converge. Now we verify the result. Starting from 1, we repeatedly apply the transformations z equals i to the power z and z equals minus i to the power z. Each iteration moves closer to a fixed point. The error shrinks, step by step, confirming convergence. Both sequences approach their predicted limits. They share the same real part, but their imaginary parts have opposite signs. This confirms the analysis. The infinite power towers converge to complex conjugates. Thanks for watching.